the reason I'm doing this is because over the past couple of weeks, I've worked with hundreds of chiropractors in Australia and New Zealand, giving them the ideal new patient consult recommendations and recommendation conversation. And there's one thing to have the exact words and intention and how to do it and why you're doing it. There's another to understand the structure and the flow behind it. I'm going to give you the structure and the flow behind it because if you don't have that, it still falls apart. So unlike what's been taught in the past, you know, times are changing, whether it's insurance declining, people coming to you after their fourth visit to a, after four different chiropractors rather than patients coming to you and it's their first time to a chiropractor and whatever you say goes, this is a different era in chiropractic. You're obviously experiencing that no matter where you are in the world, no matter what state you're in, no matter what you're seeing with insurance, it's a different new patient out there. Now, the only other thing is I believe I can see if you type in uh, messages, if you type in a question, I believe I'll be able to see it. My only reservation or disclaimer is that if I don't get to it quick enough and another one comes in, I may not be able to see it. I think I can only see the like a couple lines worth. So uh, I apologize in advance if you ask a legitimate question and I'm talking about something, another one comes in and I just miss it. But otherwise, what you will get from this is that I'm going to say things that may be uh, counterintuitive. I'm going to say things that are be confusing. I'm going to say things that are tr may trigger you and certainly piss off a lot of people. But if you watch this, if you stay through this, you will get bits and pieces, if not like a whole practice paradigm shift that you can one immediately put into practice. So I'm not talking about you've got, you don't have to go hire a Facebook marketing expert. You don't have to change your website. You don't have to go do uh, five screenings a month, five talks a month or knock on a hundred doors. Like this isn't going to take up more energy, more time, more money. This is completely shifts that happen up here and a few simple shifts on maybe a piece of paper and how you talk and talk to your patients and how you do it, which will make all the difference in more new patients starting care with you for the right reason, meaning they're inspired and hopeful, not scared to death that if they don't, something worse is going to happen. No way to practice an entire career. It's going to increase your referrals dramatically and without ever having to ask for referrals and badger patients. It's going to increase your patient retention going through that initial plan and then continuing after. And it's going to increase investment because more patients are going to be investing in you happily, not because they feel forced or it's the only option. So I'm excited. This, uh, you know, like I said, the computer's plugged in. I've got my water. Hopefully this is reading correctly. The Word document's up. The content, I own it. That, like, Hopefully nothing goes wrong so you can get this fully, and I'll leave the recording up so you can uh, review it another time. And I write down there, because you deserve it, because you did. Because most of the stuff that's wrong with our profession and the, the layperson's perception of chiropractic is not your fault. It's inherited from generations past who've taken advantage of the system, learned ta tactics and techniques, that just don't work over a sustained period of time, and certainly not in an era where people are more conscious and uh, don't put up with BS. So the reason we're at the bottom of the healthcare credibility totem pole is not your fault. And I guarantee if you're on this right now, you've probably seen some of my videos, you resonate with my material, and I guarantee you've got good intention with your patients and your practice. And this isn't about how can I just make more money or scam patients or any of that other garbage that uh, behind closed doors is unfortunately taught to uh, in our profession. Every It's a human nature, but I know personally about our profession. So let's get started. Now, this is not, in case you're confused, this is not a Facebook funnel marketing tutorial or outline. This is a new patient process from the time they call you. So they've already been on your website, and some of the stuff I'll show you, you can apply to your website. They've already called you, and then it's their in-person interaction with you. So this isn't a uh, marketing Facebook funnel, just in case that's what you're expecting. You could jump ship. You know, Plenty of people out there that can do that for you, hire, hire them. So we're going to start with the three-step new patient qualifying process. Now, this in itself is super easy and simple 
but a lot of chiropractors, because we're ingrained in this is how it's done, get confused. And the three-step process does not mean it has to be three visits. Really, really important. It does not mean three separate visits. It's purely a mental construct. So something you're going to say to patients, something you understand, it's a three-step process from consult, which is a conversation with the doctor, not an exam, you're not touching them, no objective findings, just a conversation, to exam, which is your objective findings, whether you x-ray, whether you do a scan, whether you do palpation, whether you do posture analysis, whatever it may be, conversation, exam, and then actual care, adjustment, whatever you may do is three distinct pieces. Now, they could all be done on the same day. They could be split among two days or three days. Be careful if you're doing it more than that and it gets really weird and creepy for the people, like timeshare pitches. Um, but understanding that it is a qualifying process. One of the reasons we drop the ball as a profession, as chiropractors, even though we know we can help 99.9% .9 of the people who come in, whether it's for their specific issue or just because they're subluxated, just because they've got stress in their nervous system and spine, and a proper adjustment at the right time in the right place is going to make their body function better. We know that. Patients don't know that. So when you tout on your website, when you tout on the new patient uh, call or in your consult that you're automatically going to be the solution for them, that they're automatically going to be adjusted, that falls on ears that become, one, more skeptical, two, don't feel like you're specifically the one for them. You become a lot less attractive. Whereas if it's premised from the point of you're going to have a complimentary conversation or consult with the doctor to see if you're a fit for care, and if you are, then you'll go forward with the exam there's a lot more of intrigue and attraction because it's not as easy to get and you're not assuming you can take care of them or cure them. You know, just like one of the biggest uh, complaints from the public uh, and myths about chiropractic is if, you know, once you go, you have to go for the rest of your life. You don't want to be promoting that in your practice, like, as that's what's expected. You know, if you come once, you have to come the rest of your life, you're never going to feel good. Um, you want to be careful about coming off and promoting yourself as uh, I fix everything known to man and uh, you know everyone's going to get better because it sounds too good to be true. It sounds like Snake Charmer. It sounds like Tarot Card Reader or something like that. So be careful of that. When you preface it with an if... If after the complimentary consult... I feel that you're a candidate for care, I feel I can help you, then we'll go forward with the exam. So it's two parts. It should be done on the same visit. 99% of people, when you do the consult correctly, are going to go from a complimentary consult to a paid exam. Now, if you're all worried that your consult and exam costs X amount and you just pitch it like that to patients, and now I'm doing a free consult, but a paid exam, do you have to check? No. Keep it the same fee. The conversation, it should it could be 10 minutes, 12 minutes. It's worth it to invest that amount of time up front for free to connect and build a relationship of leadership and trust and rapport. 99% of people, when you do the consult correctly, are going to go forward with the exam. So you're not going to lose money. You don't have to schedule it on two different visits. Um, but you are letting the patient know that you're starting with a complimentary consult. If the doctor feels they can help you, you can go forward with the exam on the same visit. And if so, it's going to be that much time. And you're going to schedule it in your, the back end in your books as anyone who comes in for the complimentary consult, book out the amount of time that they get the consult and the exam in one. So you're not assuming people are going to bail. What other questions come up from this? Um, yeah, if you are charging immediately for a new patient to come in and speak to you, you're just inherently going to get less new patients. So people are price shoppers. If yours is 99 or 199 and they can get it for less, they can go to this, you know, chiropractic um, franchise and get it for like $19. Or they go to this group Groupon deal and get it for 29 Plus, they're always going to be looking for less. If you just offer, you have the opportunity to come in and speak with the doctor for free. He or she will tell you if they feel they can help you. And if not, they'll tell you who can in the community. They'll give you a referral. That's a really quality and great call to action. There's no skin in the game for the patient besides some of their time, which most people don't value. And they're not only going to get 
to expert opinion whether you feel that you can help them, which is a lot different than, oh, come in and get adjusted and, and you know, we can help you. Because immediately they're thinking, oh, how quickly can I get out of here and be cured? So really, really important switch right there. Not only are they, they seeing if you can help them, but if you can't, they're getting a referral. So they're getting an expert professional doctor referral for free. So you're only going to increase your new patients coming in by offering a complimentary consult. Then you're positioning yourself as if with the complimentary consult, uh, we feel we can help you. We'll go forward with the exam, which of course is paid. Don't give away your exam for free. Um, one, it's not worth it, and it, it hurts the perception of the patient. Why am I getting all this for free? And it should be done on the same day. <clears throat> and then, here's next. If, after the exam, you feel you can help them, then they go forward with care. So there's two ifs. There's a three-step process. They only go to step two if they qualify through one, which is verbal. They only go to step three if they qualify on step two, which is objective findings. Again, whatever you do, scans, x-rays, palpation, posture analysis, whatever it may be. And it's that if two-step process that's gonna cause you to be a lot more attractive to the patient. Again, if you're pro promoting it as we're the end-all be-all cure for everything under the sun, even though you may believe it, and even though you may be right. So again, you gotta understand that you've, you have your philosophy in one hand and your understanding that is very different from what you communicate publicly to other people. You have to be able to balance those. Uh, just like, you know, Sid, you, know, you got the business hand, you got the chiropractic hand. You've got your philosophy. You've got your communication. Very, very different. And you've got to be able to do that professionally and elegantly. And that's what I love sharing with chiropractors. So giving people the opportunity to come in for a complimentary conversation is going to boost your new patient numbers. That doesn't cost any more in marketing, time, anything. Purely straight up boost the new patient numbers. And then the process, the three-step process, which is qualifying, is going to increase your conversions just inherently. So right there, uh, very, very simple how to get started. And your care, you can you can start on that first visit. You can, if you need to analyze x-rays, if you need to really look at what you did, put it together, and create a plan, and have them come back later or the next day. Either one of those is fine. Now, your consult. Let's start right here. The stereotypical, proverbial practice management new patient consult is patient comes in and they've got a concern because 99% of patients are in pain or have a condition. And even if your end goal is a wellness practice, which is completely fine and admirable, and you know, you've got the <clears throat> people running through the field in the sun, smiling on your website, and that to someone who really wants to invest in getting well, that doesn't make any sense to them. So I'm just giving you some tips on if you really want patients who are gonna invest in care to get well from issues, don't have people running through fields. And it's not that just that picture, it's if all you're doing is promoting wellness, they're going to feel like you are a wellness spa and not the solution to their problems. So you're, you're crushing yourself out of stage speaker ideology of thinking this is the wellness revolution. It's not. Um, you're crushing yourself if you're trying to cater to that on the front end. You can cater to that on the back end once you get people well through a process and a relationship of care and table talk and videos and maybe workshops you give. You can get them to that point. Don't think they're going to come in on that point. Again, do you really have more than... 1% of people coming in and asking for wellness care, whereas you're jeopardizing the 85% of people that have a significant issue that are looking for their solution, and if they think you're all about wellness care, then you're not the one for them. So, tangent, your consult. The stereotypical chiropractic consult starts with a dissertation on chiropractic, subluxation, what you do in the office because it's all about you and the patient has to understand it and they have to conform and remember they're coming into you they're nervous they're anxious just because they're in pain and they've got a condition they've come to you because they're consciously admitting they can't figure it out on their own but what's worse because of the forefathers of our profession and things that are still going on they're coming in skeptical too so if you immediately approach them with this is how we do it um, 
you know, I'll give the stereotypical far end of the spectrum, rip up their new patient paperwork and say, it's not about your headaches, it's not about your back pain, it's about this. You've lost people. Now, if you want to run the box on the wall and don't care about, you know, your, your, your business, go for it. But if you really want to help more people and make more, you're going to, you got to cater to them. They're the reason you're in business. They're the reason you're in practice. You've got to connect and cater to that person. Oh, there we go. This is new software, so sometimes I get nervous that I'm not going live anymore. So thanks for bearing with me. Now, your consult. Does it inspire the patient to want your exam? So what I teach in when you're doing your consult is you're making, one, you're not assuming you could help them. It's all about them. You're connecting with them. You're finding out what's important in their life. And you're not assuming, like most chiropractors are taught, to infer that, again, you are the uh, end-all, be-all. You're the solution. And as long as they have a spine, that you can help them or heal them. That's not the intention. The intention is that based on your experience, you expect, if you really do, that you can help them if you find in your exam what you're looking for. And then you're painting a picture with a visual, whether it's the spine, whether it's a chart, you're painting the, pic painting the picture of what you're gonna be looking for that no one else has looked for. Not the acupuncturist, not the PT, and this is not putting them down, it's just saying you're different and you're unique. Not only have they not looked for it, they're not addressing it. However, you address the spine and subluxation. The over-the-counters, the yoga, the rest, the ice and heat packs, they haven't addressed what you're looking for either. So there's no one out there. And even you've got to be so certain in your technique that even if they've been to three chiropractors before, what you're looking for in your exam is unique. So literally, I, I tell chiropractors to paint it like a treasure map. Like you're alluding to the fact that however you do your exam, x-rays, scans, posture analysis, you're going to be looking at a treasure map to see if you can find what's going on in their body and their system that's stopping them from getting well on their own. And when you do that, it's not gloom and doom. It's like an opportunity. It's engaging. It's interesting. And are you sharing that from the realm of when you discovered chiropractic and said, this is how I'm going to spend the rest of my career. And you told your best friend or you told your parents, there was a level of energy and engagement there. Kind of like how I'm engaged when I'm speaking to you now because I actually care about this. Are you doing that with your new patients? Now, not aggressive, but like you're actually interested and you're, you're engaged and like this is what your life is about. Because after five, 10 years, you've probably done a thousand or 2000 new patient consults and it's very easy to just go through the motions. Do you want your new patient's first experience with you or chiropractic to feel like you're just going through the motions? I hope not, but that's what 90% of patients feel. So you've got to retrain yourself that when you're going through what you're going to be looking for, remember, we haven't done the exam yet. We're not um, going over the exam results. You are describing what you're looking for after you've built enough connection and rapport that they're listening to you. If you start off with this, you're falling flat on your face. The first half of the consult is all about the patient. It's all about listening. It's showing them that you've listened and it's showing them that you really care, which hopefully you do then you're transitioning to what you're looking for as if it's a treasure map. And at this point, with your level of interest and engagement, because you actually care and this is what your life is about, they not only want your exam, <clears throat> and remember, they're in a complimentary conversation with you now. They know, oh, this is what I forgot to mention on the three-step process. This is not bait and switch BS. So this is not the old school practice management, come in for a free massage. Oh, by the way, let's see your insurance card. We're going to bill you for the massage. Oh, you're here. Let's take some x-rays. We're going to bill your insurance for the x-rays and then come back and we'll give you a report of findings and scare you to death on the three-year care plan. This is not bait and switch. So because I get this all the time, whether it's on your website, they're told three times. On your website, when they call in, they get an email before they come in. And when they uh, check in on the front desk, your front desk is letting them know three to four times before they ever meet with you, the complimentary, the consult is complimentary. If they're a candidate, they can go forward with an exam immediately and the exam price is X. So there's nothing weird than end of the, there's nothing weird at the end of the consult with the doctor of transitioning to an exam. 
the patient knows that's how it can go. Of course, they can decide to walk out, and they know how much the fee is. So I've got to put that out, that out there because uh, there's so much garbage in our profession that anything that comes off not explicitly clear, chiropractors oftentimes go to that mindset of, oh, I knew this was a scam approach or something phony. It's not. So where was I? After you're done sharing what you're looking for in your exam, and you're not assuming, and I'm referencing this as if it's like a Merrick chart, like this is a visual that you're sharing with your uh, patients when you're going over what you're going to be looking for in your exam, with that enthusiasm and energy, not only are they going to want your exam because they want to see, is this present to my body? They're going to want you to find it. And that's what's important. So that complimentary consult is going to cause a connection where the first half, which I'm not teaching you, that's in the program or in a training, the first half is going to have them refer. That's why doctors who I work with get referrals just after the initial consult, before you even put your hands on them, before you adjusted them, before they started feeling better, and certainly before they ever asked for a referral. That's the first half of the consult. The second one is having them want the exam and want you to find what you're looking for in the exam. So let's continue. And as I alluded to, there. Does the patient feel that you want what they want? Now, that's another red flag issue in the profession because every chiropractor wants the patient to understand chiropractic, to understand subluxation, to understand the lifelong benefits of care. That's good and that's well-intentioned. And hopefully through a relationship of care, which may be months or years of reactivations, maybe that'll happen. But most likely it's not. And the best you can hope for is that they just keep coming to you because they have a need for it not because they get the big idea. It's too much of a paradigm shift. Think about how many years it took you before going to chiropractic school, four years of chiropractic school, uh, 25 uh, chiropractic seminars, 2,000 hours of self-talk in your head. What is this thing? What is this thing? Let me see. How does it work? At least I, I, that was my life. And 1,500 hours of talking with colleagues. Then you got it. Don't expect them to get it from the subluxation packet, your website, the 10 minute video you have them watch, the 90 minute lecture you make them come to, or the 45 minute report of findings with their spouse. Like they're not getting it from there, let alone three months through initial care <clears throat> or whatever you do. So you've got to position it as everything is about what they want. And all you're there for is to show them the pathway to get it. Your care, you, you're just being the leader, the guide to show them how to get what they want. Rather, than getting them to want what you have, getting them to, to understand and want the paradigm that you've created of vitalistic healthcare and the chiropractic wellness lifestyle. It's very different. Cater to what they want through your process. And then, here's the best part, they're not investing in your process. They're not investing in you, they're not investing in your technique, they're not investing in your care plan, they're not investing in your adjustments, they're investing in getting what they want. And that's a lot more powerful and valuable to people. Not just getting the pain away, getting their life back. And when you do the consult correctly, you'll ask the right questions to find out what's missing, what's happening in their life that they don't have because of the headaches, because of the disc issue, because of the fatigue, because of whatever it is. You're going to find out what's most important to them. That's what they're investing in at the end of your care. They're not investing in your number of visits, your videos, your foam roller, your adjustment, your hands of gold, they're not investing in any of that. And it makes it a lot easier for you to uh, share what your recommendations and fees are and get an easy yes and investment when you make it about what they're getting back in their life rather than uh, the process, which again, you don't need a 45 minute report of findings to go through every aspect of what care looks like. And I'll share that in a few minutes. Uh, because people aren't investing in the process, they don't want to invest in the process, and that repels them. They want the end goal of getting their life back. If you position your care as that delivering it, so much easier, so much easier, so many more referrals, so many more startups, so much more continuation, so much more investment. And guess what? Have I shared anything yet about increasing your marketing? Have I shared anything about spending more on marketing? Spending any more time on marketing? No. 
all of this is just simple mindset shifts that's going to have you help a lot more people make a lot more without any more hours in the office or any more expense or uh, marketing expense. So the consult has to inspire people to want your exam and want to find what you're looking for in your exam. Now, let's go to the next section. Ah, uh, the good one, the big one. I'll just put it all on there. You've gone through your exam. You're creating whatever you feel is in their best interest to get the results they want through an initial phase of care. How are you recommending that care? Just, just seeing if I have any questions. How are you recommending to them that care? And this ties in right to what I was sharing before of people investing in getting their life back, getting their end results that they want, which isn't just fixing the disc issue, getting out of pain. It's being able to sleep through the night. It's being able to go to work. It's being able to play with their grandchildren. It's being able to play 18 holes of golf on the weekend. It's being able to get their life back. That's what chiropractic is. You know, we get all confused with this BS in chiropractic, you know, if, especially if you're philosophical, which I am. We get all confused, like, yeah, chiropractic is enhancing the expression of life on the nervous system level. Yeah, that's great. Patients don't care about that. But you know what that looks like in life? That means they can actually go out and enjoy their life and do the things they want. So thinking that talking about pain or outside of the subluxation or anything like that, sorry, sorry message, isn't chiropractic is ridiculous. Chiropractic is letting people fully express their life. Yes, starting from the neurological innate level, and then it pans out to what people can actually understand and hear, which is what it looks like in their life. So talking about the differences it's going to make in their life is fundamental, pure chiropractic. And if you lay off the subluxation and the nerves and all that, which patients don't get, and even the videos and the visuals, it's, they're not getting it. It's just to help them understand this 10% rather than nothing and completely blink out, you will see a far difference. Now, your specific care recommendations. Are they based on a relationship with you, like a set amount of time where you feel by the end of that time, they're going to get 80 to 100% re resolution of their issue? plus their life back, or if it's a more severe case and you're both on board where they're, maybe they're only looking for like 30 to 40% symptom reduction, maybe it's a Parkinson's case, maybe it's MS, and uh, you know and they're hopeful that you can make dramatic differences in their symptoms. So you're going to recommend an initial phase of care where you believe whatever you've come to agree on, let's say it's your goal is a 33% reduction in their symptoms, that by the end of that, that's what's where you're going to be. The reason I say that is because I'll talk about talking, saying 80 to 100% resolution of patients, <clears throat> and inevitably, a handful of chiropractors freak out and say, well, what if you can't guarantee that? Well, be a doctor, be a grown-up, and adapt to the person in front of you. I'm not teaching a script. I'm teaching structure. I'm teaching a flow. I'm teaching understandings. So I don't mean to get mad at you, but it's like, it's crazy what our profession has done to like very good, smart, educated individuals to get them so tunnel vision and focused on the wrong stuff and so shackled by this is the only way to do it. And if you don't do it this way, you're going to fail. Um, and I hope it doesn't come off like that. What I'm sharing, I'm just saying you do it this way, everything's going to increase. It's going to be a lot easier. It doesn't cost you anything. I'm not telling you, keep doing it the way you're doing it. You're going to keep getting the same results. No, it's not gloom and doom. You're not going to fail. Uh, but too many chiropractors are told that. I know I was by multiple, multiple uh, leaders and sources. So your specific care recommendations. Remember, patients don't care the process. They don't care whether you're doing uh, distraction. They don't care whether you're doing network, upper cervical, diversified, foam roller, massage. They don't care if you're sticking needles in them. They don't care the process. They don't care every little detail. They care about their end results and how long is that going to take. And people can understand time length, even if it's an acute injury, even if it happened yesterday, let alone most chiropractic patients that's been going on for weeks, months, years, then they decide to come to the chiropractor, which is actually in our favor. The biggest sabotage to your new patient startups is saying how many visits it's going to be for their initial care plan over amount of time. There's nothing that's more sabotaging. 
everyone goes to other doctors, pediatricians, oncologists, GP, dentists. There's hardly anyone out there that needs to see someone more than a handful of times. And as chiropractors, we think, oh, well, maybe you get adjusted every week or twice a week, and 30, 40, 50 adjustments is nothing. Well, you're not your patient. To the patients, anything more than eight adjustments raises red flags, raises more skepticism that's already there. Now, you're thinking, again, oh, 12 visits is nothing. No, that raises red flags to patients. And again, they're already coming in skeptical because of our profession and our forefathers would have been taught to too much of the profession. They're coming in skeptical. If you name the number of visits, you're going to make it 80% harder for people to say yes, no one's going to refer, um, or no one compared to what you, you think is possible. And it just makes everything tougher. So think about an attorney or think about an orthopedist where you're getting something resolved or an attorney, not hourly rate attorney, but okay, I'm going to take on your case for five grand. You're not thinking, okay, how much is each court appearance going to cost? How much is each email going to cost? How much is each phone call going to cost? Is the, are the minutes ticking every time I'm on the phone with him or her? You're thinking, okay, we're going to work together until this is resolved. It's going to be five grand. And everything in between is however it happens, it happens. It's whatever is needed for the case. That's how you have to think about your recommendations. That your people are investing in a relationship and a partnership for you to lead them to where they want to go to. It doesn't mean you're guaranteeing the end uh, results. So nothing is different in your fees, in your initial frequency, in the amount of time you're going to work with them, in the care you deliver. Nothing's different. Besides, you're not guaranteeing or foreshadowing the total number of visits. And I'm not going to get into all the benefits. You can find that in other videos um, or go deeply into them. But the fact is, no chiropractor knows exactly what the patient needs in frequency on week 9 or 13 or 17. Like, it's BS. No one knows that. But rather than mocking you know, old school recommendations, this gives you the ability to actually be 100% congruent and authentic in whatever you're recommending. Again, this is not membership. This isn't, we're going to work together for three months, come whenever you want. This is not unlimited care, membership practice. This is not that. You are 100% in charge of the care and the frequency. You're just not guaranteeing the total number. So at week nine, where if your current recommendations, let's say you're still seeing them three times a week, and you know a bunch of your patients, you don't need to still be seeing them three times a week because they're doing so much better. And then there's that really weird energy because you know they don't need that third visit. If you know they don't need it, they know they don't need it. And then there's that rift. You're never going to get a referral and they're not going to stay with you. Here's what's beautiful. When they're investing in you, let's just say hypothetically for three months, for the same rate as your three-month X number of visits, you can reduce down to two visits a week or one time a week. And the old fear, which is legitimate because you're running a business, is if I reduce down, I don't make as much. Now, that's not a fear. You can reduce down because it's in the best interest of the patient and you don't lose income. And that is not only you can be congruent and authentic with your recommendations, but you don't have to have that fear and stress and anxiety of it hurting your business. Second, dropping the numbers makes so much more sense to the patients. Here, here, here's, a, here's something I hear all the time in the profession as a, as a common promoted care plan. Three months of care, Starting at three times a week, or no, three months of care, 36 visits for you, whatever your rate is. It doesn't matter. That 36 visits is the scariest thing. It doesn't matter if you're charging 10 grand, 5 grand, or a grand. 36 visits is the scarier number. When you recommend that many visits, first of all, another tangent. If you really need to see someone 36 times over three months to get them 80 to 100% well, you're doing something wrong. I'm just straight up. Like, look at the best adjusters in the history of the chiropractic. I'll go with BJ and Gonstead. I don't think they ever saw someone more than twice in an entire year or case. So I know that's the extreme of the best of the best, but um, you shouldn't be having to see someone three times a week for three months, let alone more than that. It's just, it's, you're totally devaluing your skill. You are completely devaluing it in the patient's mind and to yourself. And I guarantee if you switch to two, um, they'll get the same results, if not better. Now, in the old model, you're losing a third of your money. In this model, you don't lose anything. You just get more time back. So it's either 
more time to spend on the weekend with your family or more time to see more new patients. So it's a win-win. And patients um, are going to refer more because people hate coming in three times a week. And uh, it's just overwhelming. It's insanely overwhelming. So drop the ridiculousness of same 36 and watch how much easier patients say yes, invest, refer, stay with you. You could become congruent. You're not bound to they have to have three visits a week every single week of their care uh, because surely if people are getting well, they don't need that. And uh, it just makes everything so much easier. So if you're doing set number of visits, especially more than eight, you're crushing your potential referrals. No one's referring other people in to large number of visit uh, plans. But the same plan, we're going to work together for three months, it's going to be X, or we're going to work together for three months, I'm going to see you 36 times, it's going to be X. All you did was drop the visit number. That came off 100% different to patients. And I know as a chiropractor, because, again, because you've been ingrained with this is the one way to do it, this is the only way to offer care, this is the only way to charge, you know, your, your brain might be in a knot right now. Go ask five lay people, not patients, because then they'll be wondering why you don't do it. Ask five lay people, hey, which sounds better? We're going to work together for three months. We're going to start two visits a week. And then as you progress, you're not going to need to come in as much. And I'm just throwing this out there, there and it's two grand. I'm not throwing it out. I'm not saying that as that's what you should charge. I'm just giving a simple number. So ask five lay people this. Which one sounds better to you? We're going to work together for three months to get this issue resolved. We're going to start at two visits a week. And as you progress, you're not going to have to come in as much. It's two grand. Or we're going to work together for three months. I'm going to see you three times a week. I'm going to see you 36 times over the three months. And it's two grand. Ten people will say, I want this one. No one will say they want this one. And that is what you're doing in your practice right now. That is why you don't have 95% conversion of people who have to pay completely out of pocket, even if uh, insurance isn't present. This alone will make all the difference. And did it cost you any money to do this? No. Did it take any more time to do this? No. If anything, you, you can cut your recommendations conversation in half. Did it take you any more hours in marketing or staff? No. Just up here and on your recommendation sheet, erase the total number of visits. The only thing you need to do. See how incredibly easy this is? Okay, last part. Oh, this is getting long. Your recommendations conversation. Is it less than 10 minutes? It has to be. So I grew up in the model where it was a 45 minute closed door, spouse had to be there, timeshare pitch, just education dump where the people would come, the doctor and the people would come out like just feeling exhausted, like a train just hit them. That's not how you want to start people on care. You know, that, that, that ridiculously beautiful line in our profession or in all professions, but chiropractors use it, closing patients. Yeah, that sounds really good. That's exactly what a doctor wants to think about is closing and selling a patient. You really want to have that as their experience of beginning care with you and beginning a relationship, how about opening a relationship with them? How about they opening a case rather than closing people? Which sounds like, you know, you just close them, now you're not going to connect and deal with them anymore. You got their money and now you're running. So be careful of the words you use and what you're thinking because it's going to dictate your body language, your tone, which is what people pick up on. And if you're thinking about closing a new patient, they're going to feel like they're getting closed. If you think you're starting a relationship and opening one, that's what they're going to feel. One, how would you rather practice going in every day? Two, what do you think is going to get you better results? Helping more people, making more money. That's what I'd rather. So your recommendations conversation should be literally six minutes. If they have questions, seven or eight. Keep it simple. The spouse is not forced to be there. Does it feel like a timeshare pitch? Does it feel like a sale? Are you giving them the opportunity right now one time to prepay and you'll cut your fees in half? Like, yes, you're going to get prepays, but you're crushing your credibility and you're crushing your referrals because it's such a just slimy, weird way to be a doctor and offer your care. So I'm not saying that stuff works because people like to save money and it's they're stressed and they're in fear mode. But on the back end, 
you're going to need new patients the rest of your career, and you're going to hate showing up to practice every day. You're going to feel like a scripted salesperson. Not a great way to deliver healthcare. So let's let, let's let go of the really bad stuff, the high visit numbers, which is anything more than eight, which doesn't mean you can't see them 30 times or 36 times, but you're not guaranteeing that, and you're not promoting it from the first uh, meeting or the second meeting. Are you spending time justifying and educating your new patients in your report of findings? In your, and I don't like the word report of findings because it conjures up in my mind timeshare and pitch. So I like saying recommendations. Are you justifying or educating? Think about going to a physical therapist. Think about going to an oncologist and they have the results. Is there any justification? Is there any real education besides here's what it is, this is what it means? But as chiropractors, we've been taught we need to convince the patients. We need them to understand what we understand. And the more educating and the more justifying comes off like convincing and selling and is a repellent to new patients. So be careful if you're justifying and educating what you should be doing. Do you have certainty? And even if you're not 100% certain in what you're recommending, because I get it, there's no uniform standard, and uh, yeah, there's no uniform standard in the field. You've got to figure it out based on your clinical experience, your history, and what you feel is in the best interest. Are you bringing certainty, even if you've got to fake it? You've got to bring certainty that this is the best route for them. Second, are you coming off with unneediness, that you don't need them more than they need you? because that is one of the biggest issues in our profession. I remember even like a practice management slogan years ago I was in school and, and the t-shirts were like one more or something like that, which just conveyed they never had enough. Now that's a totally different topic, but it was, I'm not enough. I'm not good enough because I always need one more. Now they'll say that's not what it was about, but that's really the underlying psychology, not being good enough. And of course we're, of course, fair tactics and scare tactics come in when that's the um, that's the mentality when you're not coming out of abundance and love and certainty and just leadership. So be careful if internally you know you need that new patient's investment because of your overhead or because of your life work or whatever, it's coming off. You've got to switch that flip, flip that switch in your brain where the patient needs you more than you need them. And part of that goes back to, a big part of it goes back to the consult. Are you finding out what's missing in their life? That when they get your care, when they get the pain away, when they get the issue resolved, they get that back is more valuable than whatever you are. The, the monetary value, this is really, really important for you, the mindset stuff with, because I know most chiropractors don't like talking about fees because you got into the profession to help people not to have financial conversations, so I get it. Here's a way that'll really help that. When you do your due diligence in the consult and you find out what is missing in their life that you're very certain that they'll get back when they get better, remember, playing with the grandchildren, 18 holes of golf on the weekends, getting back to their workouts, uh, just going through the day not being irritated and frustrated uh, because of the pain. When they get that back, there's a monetary value associated with that. And I'm not talking about how much it costs to go play 18 rounds of golf. I mean, how much is it worth to that person? There's a monetary value to that. Are you finding out what their perceived monetary value to get their life back is? And I don't mean you're asking them. I mean, you're suspecting and you're estimating. Is it more than whatever the cost, the financial investment of your care? If you find that out, you find out what it is, you put your perceived value on what it is to get that back for them, it should be a lot more than whatever your financial investment for your care is. And just in that process, it's a lot easier for you to share your fees and your finances. Literally, at a subconscious level, it's, and I'm just working with a $2,000 hypothetical care plan, that's not my recommendation for the amount to charge. If getting back what they're gonna get back is worth 20 grand to them, you're literally saying, for two grand, you can get 20 grand back. That's a good investment. That should be one of the subconscious psychological factors going, or conscious in your mind, subconscious in theirs, that they're paying you a certain amount 
to get a much larger amount back in their life of monetary value. So in case you struggle with your care fees, if you start looking at it from that approach, you'll see a huge difference. But you gotta do your due diligence on the consult by connecting with them, asking the right questions, listening, remembering what they said, and then being able to share that with them so they see the value of what they're getting back in their life. Because no one sees value with sneeze. <coughs> ah, no one, besides chiropractors, sees value in subluxation correction, curve correction, um, even getting out of pain. People can take painkillers, people can get a cortisone shot, insurance pays for it. That's not where they see value. They see value in getting their life back. And they're coming to you admitting they haven't been able to do that on their own. You've got to just be able to handle that relationship professionally, respectfully, gracefully, and be a leader. Be great with them. Um, initial care referrals happening first month for new patients. Okay, we're not going to get into this today because I didn't realize this would go this long, but I know I can talk. So what did we cover? We covered the three-step new patient process of a framework and a positioning for patients to understand that they have to qualify to be able to receive an exam and your care. Just doing that is going to increase your new patient numbers because the conversation is complimentary, so there's no out-of-pocket, there's no skin in the game, and there's no bait-and-switch, and it's going to increase how many people... Um, no, it's going to increase the mentality of them wanting your exam and them, wa and them wanting you to find out, them wanting you to find what you're looking for in your exam. Very, very important. Then we talked about the consult, both the front end, connecting with them so they feel heard. You're going to increase your referrals. And then on the back end, making what you're looking for a mystery and interesting. And that's what the exam is for. It's for a treasure hunt. It's going to make them, again, want you to find it. Uh, the recommendations dropping total number of visits because whenever you mention the total number of visits, as long as it's more than eight, you are absolutely sabotaging referrals, startups, investment, and retention. You are sabotaging it. And that's why you know, I see it all the time. Endless new patients needed, no referrals. Um, you may have a good uh, conversion rate because you do like a, let's play, let's make a deal here. Half, here's half, you know, cut the fees in half. If you pay in full today, don't tell your husband, you know, that, garbage, uh, but it crushes you and you, you, you know, you're in salesperson mode your entire life and you're in endless new patient uh, marketing your entire life. So just right there, just stop doing it. It's so easy and it's so stupid how it's been taught. So make that one switch, everything gets easier. And then we finish with the actual recommendations conversation. Does it feel like a time share pitch? Is it needy? Is it educating or justifying? Drop that make it all about them, what they want, and subconsciously the value of what they're getting back in their life is so much more than whatever the value or the fees of your care is. You do this, none of it cost any money to do, no marketing, no time, no extra staff. It's going to make a lot more sense to your staff than you because they haven't gone to chiropractic school and they haven't... Um, been ingrained with the coaching you have, but ask a few lay people and watch their expression of just like, yeah, that makes complete sense. Like, yeah, of course I choose that one over that one. Look at this. Of course I choose. Every lay person you ask them will say, of course I choose this care recommendations for the same price as this care recommendations, same price. And you've been doing this one your entire career. So, I know you have questions on this. I know it's like, wait, what about in this situation, this situation, this situation? Consider this. And I'm basing this on like, obviously this isn't, uh, you can't do a case fee for an in-network person, but you can still, let's say it's in-network, you can still say, we're gonna work together for this amount of time, we're gonna start at this uh, frequency. As you progress, you won't need to come in as often. And you don't have to mention you're gonna be in 12 times, 18 times, 24 times, 36 times. That will play out. You don't need to tell them. That's all ego. That's all Cairo BS, uh, stats ego. So yes, they can't prepay or break it into installments and do a case fee plan, but just by dropping the total number of visits, we'll have to start up in the continuation of the referrals increase. So you want more info? Go to patientmastery.com. There are videos on 
I'll sh there's a video straight there on that initial consult of connecting with the patient, the actual how, go there. You want to actually learn this and like work through your personal care recommendations, get to the training and find out the info, San Diego, June 8th to 9th, uh, patientmastery.com. That's the next two-day training, two full days of giving you the absolute best of the best that's offered for you to have the most fun and profitable practice possible. Bring your staff. I've made it the best rate ever to get there. Uh, the investment in yourself and your practice and your future is the return on investment is just insane. So that's the last thing I'm going to say about it. Yeah, you'll learn every step of the process there. Every single word of the consult, which you won't feel like a salesperson and it's not scripted, but it's not 100% scripted. Every word of the recommendations conversation, how to actually create the recommendations, all the mindset on what's going through a typical chiropractor's head and why it sabotages us in relationship and patients and how to shift that and a uh, mindset on many other areas of life that's just going to make uh, practice and life that much better. So we're getting up to an hour. I'm going to cut this off. Thank you for your time. If you wrote a question, the software I'm using, I didn't see it, so I apologize. If there were any questions, I just didn't see it. Depending on the question, if I didn't feel like I answered it, I will uh, send you a message and answer that. Otherwise, thank you for all you do. Thank you for, I, if you're on this, if you've been watching this, whether it's recording or live, like, I know we resonate. Like, you wouldn't be watching this if you didn't resonate with me, so I appreciate what you do. I appreciate who you are, even though I can't see who's on right now. Like, I admire you. I acknowledge you for how you practice, and I hope you take some of this, put it in, so you can help more people make more in less time, with less energy, with less investment. That's really... Uh, my gift to you and what I want from everyone in this profession so we start having a shift in how the public perceives us because that's going to start making it easy for every chiropractor. That's uh, my hidden agenda. So you need anything, you know where to find me, patientmastery.com. Uh, or you send me a message on Facebook. Make sure to uh, follow or friend or like or whatever so you're more notified when I do future videos and have future announcements about good stuff. Other than that, it is probably the last New York snow day of the year, and uh, I'm enjoying the view. I'll maybe share some pictures later. All right, be well, guys.